I'm Chanel Scott, the queen of relationship talk. I'm Josh Powell, two-time NBA champion. I've journeyed from trauma to healing. From the NBA to family, I've learned what really matters. We've come together to unlock the secrets of successful relationships. One conversation at a time. One conversation at a time. Welcome to Relationships Matter, the podcast. My name is Chanel Scott. And I am Josh Powell. We have some amazing guests with us today. We have husband and wife, wife, Terry J. Vaughn <laughs> and Karan Raleigh. Welcome to our podcast. We're so excited to have you guys. So, you know, we talk about relationships, right? And relationships really do matter. But what I want to start with, I want to know, how did you guys meet? Talk to me about how you guys met. How do we meet? Uh, doing a play. She was in the play. I was um, working in the play with uh, one of the performers, Tank. He was a good friend. He was on my brother's label. So I was assigned to him to work with him on the play. As Of course, I was aspiring to go into acting. So it was a twofold thing is to kind of see the ins and outs of the, you know, the business and also earn a little money as I was transitioning from football into acting. And that's where I met her at. Okay. I was just trying to see if he was going to have <laughs> sauce on. But that was basically what happened. Yes, I was. What would the sauce look like, though, if he did it? It comes oh, later, my Josh. Goodness. Okay, okay. You'll get Fair a enough. taste. Okay. I'm sure he can't Fair help enough. himself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but what was it about her that made you like zone in on Terry? Mm. I didn't zone in. Mm. It was more of a like, um, <laughs> initially off top, she was, you could tell she's a very, you know, light spirit. Um, doesn't take herself or life just too serious, which is appealing to me because I'm the same way in that aspect. So uh, off top, I knew she liked to have fun, which is it's key to me. If you ain't trying to have fun, then we we can't do nothing, no way. Um, and then it wasn't it was like she she'd tell you it was never initially. It was just hey, nice to meet you, you know. That is true. So yeah. initially, there was nothing. Um, probably. Well, I don't know about for him. For me, well, I, I did. Was, I saw she was, was beautiful. Obviously, it was like, yo, yes, damn, she looks, she looks even better than you know that she does on TV. Blah blah blah. That thought hit you immediately as right. well. But you know, again, it wasn't nothing like, oh man, I got to get that. You know, no, no, I wasn't none of that. It was just like, okay, she like she gonna be some cool folks in this. You know, to hang out, we can kick. It's cool. All right. Yeah, that's that's. That is, I am it. some cool folks to hang out with. Thank you. No. no, for me, I was um honestly, I was going through a divorce. I was going through a separation. So I had no that just wasn't on my radar. I was just happy to be doing the play, touring, making money, doing something that I love and a distraction from what was going on in my personal life. Mm. So um, so definitely there was you know, in first meeting, there was just, I'm just meeting all the folks on mm -hmm. the show. And as the show progressed and we went on tour and all of us are hanging out, mm -hmm. you know, at, at the end of the shows every night, laughing, having fun, hanging out. And then somewhere in there, it was like, oh, He's kind of cute. Like, <laughs> I never <laughs> tripped off of that. <laughs> and then, and I think that came more through just conversations, like us hanging out at night and just talking, talking about everything, books we've read, uh, movies we love, uh, just uh, upbringing stuff, just getting to know each other with no with other nothing, intention. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, on it. It was... nothing on it. And then I think somewhere in there, it just kind of like start clicking for both of us, like, oh, we're vibing. Like, what's well, happening? When she told me she read a certain book. I was like, oh, <clears throat> okay, okay, okay. I see where you're coming from. All right, all right. What was that book? It was The Alchemist. Yes. Which was the I book. I love that book. Yeah, yeah, me too. That it was, that's, you know, that's kind of like a barrage, like a, that's like a compass book for me. You know what I'm saying? So when I, when I asked her, you ever read The Alchemist? She's like, yeah, that's one of my favorite books. And I said, oh, shit. She reads. <laughs> she reads and she reads the kind of stuff I read. So I'm like, okay. And that was kind of, for me, that was the first spark of, hmm. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's that was for me. And I think, you know, that was that was because you were dating girls that didn't read. Uh-oh. So that made me stand out. I mean, I don't know. I'm just Well, no, they thought. read. They, they you know, of course <laughs> when I got to the book saying. question, but most of them they failed their question, so they didn't last long. That you know what I'm saying? It was all I'm about I need I need that intellect in you before we can go any further than you know tonight. No, yeah. No, that's dope. I had a quick question for you uh-huh. though, just kind of going backwards real quick. What does the healing process look like? Because I, I know you spoke about ending one situation yeah. and then kind of being in this space. But what did your healing journey look like? For me, it was a lot. It was, um, for one thing, being out working, right. doing something that I love. That was a part of it. Um, I'm a huge journaler, and I was more back then. I journaled all the time. Yeah. That was very, um, you know, much a part of my healing process. And, um, yeah, I think I was, I was very... Um, open, vulnerable. I have really good friends that I talk to about what I was going through. I think I just have to express it. And mm-hmm. I express it through my art. So thank God for the play at that time because I was putting it all in that. And I was putting it in my on my sheets at night, like writing. I think there's something so significant about the way the two of you met because mm-hmm. I talk on my other show about relationships in terms of how you connect with the right person, right? And I personally don't believe in the whole cat. I don't do, not even, it's not necessarily even a, a the issue of belief. Mm-hmm. I just don't casually date, mm-hmm. right? And so when I talk about how to connect with the right person, I think it's important that both of you were in purpose, doing something that you love. You wasn't looking for anyone. You wasn't looking for anyone, mm-hmm. but then you connected and you got to know each other without any of the pressures and the stressors and right. you found out things about her that you typically wouldn't find out when you just see an attractive woman. It's like, oh, okay, that person. And then you kind of approach them a little different, you know, but in this particular instance, you guys got to know things about each other without any pressures right. or any strings. And then you found something in common and you connected, you were already on the play, but then you found even more. And then you got to know each other that way. I think that's how people are supposed to connect. Yeah. If you tap into purpose first mm-hmm. and find those commonalities and mm-hmm. then we can, because because the whole point of two people coming together is to do something that's larger than the both of you. Right. It's not even about the romantic connection. Agreed. That's the bonus. It's really about kingdom building, right? What has God yep. called us to do together? What is our God-given assignment? Mm-hmm. And then all that other extra stuff is great. So I think that that's the first time I've ever heard a couple express like, this is how we met. We were doing this. And then mm. I noticed something in the process of me doing what I love. I wasn't looking for a man. I was going through this. Mm-hmm. But then I connected with someone who I had things in common with. I think that's right. amazing. I think people need to hear more of that. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of times we, and I'll just speak for women, um, we have like a a list of things of what we want, yeah. what we don't want, um, how how you know how I'm gonna be in a relationship, how I want my person to be in the relationship, and when we stick so hard to those solid uh, do's and don'ts, I think that we miss out a lot. I think you have to be fluid. I think you have to, because literally at that time, even when we did notice that there was something happening, Mm -hmm. I was very clear. I did not want to get married. I was like, I don't want to get married again. I am so open to being in a relationship forever with someone. I'm open. I definitely want to have more kids, but I absolutely do not want to get married again. And it was Strictly for the whole legal process yeah. of what marriage is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I got a, a rude awakening of that when I decided I want to get a divorce. Right. I was like, then all of a sudden it's like the judge is involved. There's lawyers involved. I'm like, these people don't even know us. Exactly. Why is this a part of now I want to quit you or you want to quit me? You know, yeah. it's like it just shouldn't be. It was so easy for us to get married, but it's so difficult to get divorced. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I don't need to do that again. Mm-hmm. I just want to follow my heart. I don't need no legal nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously that changed during the process of our relationship. But that was my thinking. Mm-hmm. and. I think you just got to be fluid. 
You right. gotta, you gotta trust. You gotta say yes. You gotta be uh, courageous. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you gotta take a chance. How important is that foundation? Like, because no relationship is perfect, right? Mm, right? And so when you're having differences, how important is the commonalities or the way you connected or the things that you had? How important, how how big of a role does that play in just sustaining healthy relationship? Even when you're like, I ain't feeling you today. But then you have all these other things that you have in common in terms of friendship and things mm-hmm. that you like. I, I think it's I think it's really important, but for me, it's always about the, you know, the, the the tally sheet. I mean, is it over here the stuff that we may not feel completely happy with the other person about versus what I am happy about this person about? Like, as long as the list of happy outweighs the list of unhappy, for me, it's always a win. I'm always I, I break it down. Like, what's the score here? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm we got way more dope stuff going than we do anything bad. You know, and even as you grow you end up starting to f- actually enjoy and what you don't like becomes the stuff that really keeps you holding on. Really, be- it, it could be, it becomes endearing to me, for me. Like the stuff that 15 years ago that might have got on my nerves about her, it's like, it, it makes me laugh now. It's a, it's, it's, it's what lets me know is her. It lets me know that's my wife. That's who, that's who I love. Those, those imperfections, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What she's great at is what she's great at. Who she is, that's that's easy. But the stuff that that's taught me more about myself mm-hmm. is the things that now I lean on to saying, man, wouldn't have it no other way. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what yeah. keeps it keeps it good for me, is that part. Was there anything like a part of the journey and the process? Were there any stereotypes? Because I know you both being in the industry, right? And you being an athlete and just those different things. Like, was there anything that that either one of y'all were kind of like, when you put somebody in a box, right? Because where I'm coming from is, I know us as athletes, a lot of times we get a bad rap. Like, you know, are you dating this, that, and the third? So I just wanted to know, like, was there any stereotypes that you... I had no desire to date a professional athlete Mm. because of the reputation of professional athletes. What's the reputation? Um, Womenizers, Mm. partiers, um, you know, woman after woman, not going to commit. Yeah. And I was I was like, I'm too grown. I don't I don't need any of that. I don't want any of that. Um, And I don't choose that. Um, And so that was. That was definitely a thing for me. Um, and, you know, I got wind of some of the females that he did date prior than me. And I'm like, none of them are like me. Like, if, are those the kind of girls he like? Because that's not me. Okay. And I think that the comfort it came in knowing that he was waking up every day choosing me. And mm-hmm. I had to get past my own insecurities and all that stuff and saying, yeah, he's dated those women, but he's here choosing me. And he was very consistent and on all the things that he said he was. And I'm not saying that everything was perfect and yeah. nothing like that. Right. But I can boldly say that he definitely chose me every day since we've been together. Because I was going to ask what, what separates, you know what I mean? And, and choosing is is definitely important. So I guess Very important. safety, yeah. right? Making you feel safe and yes. stuff like that. So yeah. is there anything that you had maybe uh, potentially? Before you answer that question, I want you to talk about your athletic career because we didn't really get into it and there may be viewers who don't know. So All right, so um, I'll answer the question that we own right now. Then we'll get to the athletic part because I like to stay in order. I, I'll lose track of what we're doing, <laughs> even though I haven't had anything today. But uh, oh, Lord. <laughs> I um for like she said, the stereotypes. Yeah, we 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 both went into it, and I I'll sit here and say I was all of them. I was all of the athletic stereotypes. I was a womanizer. I was did all the things that you think an athlete does, and um. I think the reason that I saw in her, which made me realize that she was the one for me, is that I saw a version of myself differently through her eyes. 
and I was willing to put the work in to be something different. And um, I think that was like me working really hard to beat the stereotype and change the stereotype. I think that is what I was, you know, leaning into her so much for and, and why I loved her in that moment, in that time, in that space where we were at then. Because I knew for myself, Josh can attest to this, there's only so much partying, there's only so much womanizing, there's only so much that you can do if you're an intelligent being that after a while it becomes mundane and you start to feel like, wait a minute, that's not really who I am. And Josh and I talked about this off camera earlier about how as an athlete, we have to live in a certain part of ourselves to be that, right? It's a very um, primal um, profession, right? Um, you can't really be the, the, the soft spirit that you may really be to really compete and do the type of things you got to do in that arena. And with that comes, you know, sh you know, your libido's up. All those things come with a man that wants to conquer, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you become a conqueror in everything you do. And that doesn't just stop in your, in your sport. It's, I see that woman. I got to have that. It's just, that's just who I was at that time, right? And meeting Terry, I, 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 you know, the stereotypes are actress, uh, they dingy, they light hair, you know, but she read, she studied, she's spiritual. She, she, she broke all of those stereotypes for me. And I was like, well, shoot, let me break my stereotypes for her. Unknowingly, I don't think we, we know these are the conversations we had longer into our relationship. But at that time, that was, that was the conversation I was having with myself mm -hmm. about, man, why are you feeling this way about this woman? You know, and like what's different than whatever, right? And, you know, being honest and looking back, you got to understand, understand now that that's what it was. And um, that's what it was. So what sport did you play? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I played, I played, I played football. Okay. Uh, I played professional football for seven years. Um, my love was basketball. Like, I love basketball. Like, I love my wife. Like, I love my kids. Um, football was a side piece. Um, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I was about to say something like yeah. <laughs> Football was. It was. It was. To me, it was one of those things. I was good at it. And I also knew God gave me an ability. So, I was like, I, I was raised to believe that if you have a gift, it's your my responsibility to use that gift for whatever, for how long I can. And never loved football, but I did it. And I was good at it and um, did it for seven years. And, you know, I really talk about it even now to this day. I'm an actor now. I'm a producer. I'm, I'm in a new phase of life. I usually don't talk about what was done, what I did and who I used to be and that version of me because he's gone. That, that, that's gone. All I got is arthritis and, mm -hmm. and, every, and, and, and you know what I'm saying, and a, and a pension to show for it, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, football career was that, you know, all time sack leader, University of Minnesota history to this day. I Come always, on, talk your smack. I, hang, talk I still, your smack. still hang my hat on that one because it's, it's it's a 25 year record. You know, that's something that's an accomplishment that I'm still, you know, proud of. Like, you know, I put that work in and my NFL career wasn't much to talk about. We that's why it's a short segment. Um <laughs> But again, you get your flowers, I, brother. Yeah, but, yeah, but I did it. You know what I'm saying? I got my pension. I got you know my you know, my family's taken care of through the stuff I did in the league with our insurance things we do. So I, it served its purpose, right? Um, so yeah, that was it. You know, but, but not just that, right? Just quick second on that. Like to make it to the top of anything, you know, is a huge accomplishment. Yeah. You know, y'all both are examples of that. But um, just to kind of go into something else, I was thinking about as you both were talking. And this is for both of y'all. Um, what makes you both feel safe about each other? Or like really being your natural self? Because I feel like, and the reason I asked that question, I think it's so important. I believe one of my theories is a lot of people are in relationships because they're just in them, mm -hmm. something to do, no matter how long they might last or anything like that but you're not really getting the true version of the person, right? Right, Because we've learned how to program and we're conditioned to just move and be a certain way to make it work and be comfortable. But because you both have had to do so much changing and evolving still, yeah. you know, it's, it's a never ending yeah, journey. Like I to tell people, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But what, what does that look like for you both? Like safety for you mm -hmm. and safety for you. Um, 
for me, I, it's the consistency of, like I said, choosing mm. because we both could. Yeah, we could. He could go off and meet somebody else, or if he's tired of being here, I mean, he could. You know, he'll be fine. I too, I could choose the other way and not want to deal with the little things that about him that get on my nerves. And I could say, okay, I'm done with it, and I know I'll be fine. I know I will. But. What I love now where we are, and it is a journey. We've been married 15 years now. Together, and, how long, though? Uh, 17. 17. So 17 total, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's the consistency of, of growing together because we're not the same individuals that we were when we first met. Neither one of us are. Um, having someone that I know compliments and... Um, appreciates my growth my growth um because i you know i'm i know i'm a lot i know i am and i i like myself yeah. it's who i am i love being a lot whatever that means um and he allows me to be that he never tries to make me feel um inadequate insecure that i'm missing out on something you know because in our work we have to be gone for certain amounts of time as a mom of three i get that like dang i'm missing something or i'm feeling kind of guilty he always pours into me i got this you th this is what you're supposed to do do you love your career do you love what you're doing i love it i don't want to give it up then you're doing what you're supposed to do that's why you got me like mm. he's constantly pouring into me like that so i don't have to worry about when i have to be gone i love that goosebumps. about him goosebumps Hold on. i love that that's like my favorite thing i like the the way that you describe the consistency, yeah. wanting to be chosen. I think a lot of yeah. women are afraid to say, I want to be chosen. And that's uh, yeah. something that I harp on a lot. Like, yeah. I want to be chosen. I want to be You know, chosen. I've experienced a tremendous amount of rejection in my life. Yeah. And it's important that I feel chosen. Yes. You know, and I want to say that. I see that a lot on social media, people will say, Oh, you a pick me. I want to be picked. I yes. do. I don't see anything wrong with that terminology, especially if I have an affinity for a particular person. I want him to pick me. A absolutely. So you call me a pick me. Call me a pick me. Yeah. You know, I want to be chosen. And it's in, that because is they have a choice. Right. Just absolutely. like you have a choice. They have a choice who they want to be with. And I want you to choose me. And I think we've I've said those exact words to him in arguments and stuff like I need you to choose me. Yes. That's the only way this is going to work. And if you're not choosing me, I have to go. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I and 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 women aren't the only people that feel they want to be chosen. Like I mean, I can go back to Do you ever feel like you haven't absolutely. been chosen? Absolutely. Really? Okay, cuz I just think men don't no, we do. So many no. options. Do yeah, you ever so feel like options. you're not no, chosen? We, we just as <laughs> sensitive and we just as emotional yep. as y'all are, if not more so. Um, it's just it's just the way we translate the choosing of it. You know what I'm saying? I think like she said something in the beginning when she started talking, like I love myself. Love, I love, I mean, there's nobody I love more than me. You know, my kids, it's me, my kids, my wife, my my, you know, my God. But again, if I say I love me, I love my God because I feel like we are the same in connection in the same way. So I believe my self-love is what has kept me safe in anything. Um, and then the fact that I can be my full version of whatever vision I see of myself in any moment, I the safety with her comes in, I she she's not gonna run to the high hills, you know, the high hills if it comes, it gets, it gets a little weird because again, I understand. Like she said, I'm, she's a lot. I know I'm a lot. Um, yes, he is. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> and, lean into the mic. For that. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with it. I, I agree. Like it is what it is, and 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 you know, that, I think that's and it's just like she said. We both have the, the the ability to choose elsewhere if we choose to do that. And I think like where we at now in our marriage and where we are as, as a couple and just in our in our spiritual walk together in this journey. 
is that I think that's the biggest thing that's changed with us now. It's like we live in the, we living in the days now. We living in our moments as opposed to worrying about something that happened in the past, or we're not really can overt overtly concerned about tomorrow. We, we're really we're good today. This yeah. is where we at, and we love that. You know what I'm saying? And if some changes, we both now understand and, and feel like I don't own her and she don't own me. And we're here every day because I like spending time with her more than anybody else on the planet. You know what I'm saying? And, and right now, that's the same way for her. But we also have understand that with each other too. Like we have a, you know, a, 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 a transparency with us that understands. Like, look, man, she, I understand she could wake up tomorrow and be like, "Look, I'm I'm doing something different. I want to do something different." I'm like, "Well, shoot, send me a postcard, and I could do the same thing, and she would do the same thing, and it would be, it would hurt because you're losing." Something that you was from Jake, but in the, the day we understand that this this journey ain't about us. It's, it's 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 we we both have something bigger that we're here to do and here for. So we're not caught up in the minutia of personal whatever idea of whatever you think is supposed to be. And I think that's the freedom that we're living in now. And I think that freedom is giving us more strength and more power as a couple than we ever had. Because so you don't feel obligated. But you're here because you act, you want to be. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah, we ain't on yet. Let me look at her. Look at me. Think we going to be lonely anywhere? <laughs> no. Respect. <laughs> what do you think is the ingredient to a long-lasting relationship? Everything we've been talking about. Yeah. I think constant elevating, constant elevation with um, internally each other. Um, supporting um, each, each, I, each version of said person that comes out of the fire each time um and it's like now I've, she's she's a totally different woman and i'm a totally different man but you know it's it's fun because now i get to relearn a new spirit a new version like she gets to relearn and you know fall in love again and figure it all out and understand like oh wow this is this is new about you this is night nice. and you know and this i think that's where it is then the communication part just understanding yeah. the, the checking in and understanding like yo Last year I was thinking this. This year I'm I'm here. Because it's fluid. Like she's everything is fluid. Like I'm not hard on I'm not I used to be a really hard line guy. Like this is what I believe, this is what it's gonna be, period. Now, eh. This is what I kind of feel and believe, but again, I'm open to it all now. Like I don't I don't squeeze the soap on anything. It's like I'm just holding the soap in life now. Like I'm not squeezing, I'm not I'm not chasing nothing. I'm not, I'm just, I'm just staying aligned in my own self and I'm pulling and, and creating the world that I want to see in my marriage and in my, my career internally first. And I'm just letting it all come to me as, as it's going to come. So I had a quick question because um, with both of you, obviously the individual, you got your personal grind, you got your spiritual life, you got all of these different things. How do you balance family? Like, how do you, because you got to spend time, you know, you spend, mm -hmm. you do what you do for yourself. You spend time with each other. But I know a lot of people, that's like a struggle. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they're constantly working or constantly gone. So what is a blueprint of success? How does that look for you all? To me, um, we, you know, I, I love my life, right? I love having a family. I love being a mother. I love those kids. I love being his wife because we have a lot of fun. Um, you know, we we have great conversations and we we value our home space. Like our space is our sanctuary. Mm -hmm. We love being home. I also equally love my career. And I think my career not I think I know my career is is a part of my purpose right. on this earth to um to tell stories to to do the things that I do is purpose driven yeah. and I have a reason why I love it it's you know it's when we can talk about that that's a whole nother show representation all the things right. um so I do my work with a purpose and I do my home with a purpose. Right. And I think any any given time if I'm at work, I'm fully 100% 
free at work. I'm mm-hmm. giving that all my attention. I cannot give mommy stuff attention, which is why I'm so happy to have a great teammate. Mm-hmm. And we have support. We have a support system as well. Right. Um, and when I'm home with the kids, I'm pouring into that 100%. Got to put the phone on hold, but, you know, as much as I can because this life is, you know, but I try to give those kids 100% just like I do when I'm at work. So it really isn't a balancing. I feel like it's more of a juggle. Like right. sometimes the kids are up top and he's in the middle and the work is at the bottom. And then mm-hmm. sometimes that work up top and he in the middle and the kids at the bottom. Yeah. And it's just like, because I love them all. And if God gave them to me, I can do them all. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's it's really just, again, a faith walk. Um, no, I'm I'm living in my purpose, giving each other grace, um, all those things. Because I love it all. My house is crazy. It's wacky. Those kids are crazy. My daughter is a beast. It's like <laughs> everybody wants and needs everything. Right. And um, and y'all get it when I get get there. <laughs> Based on your experience, what are some of the more common relationship challenges that people face today? Again, I think people are too rigid in what they believe and been taught a relationship is supposed to be. I think that you cannot go into, you can't even live your life like that and be fully happy. I feel like you have to be honest and true to yourself as an individual. And that may not match what your mother did or what your grandmother did or what the church tells you you're supposed to. It may not be none of that. And But if you're not, if you're only living to satisfy those lanes that you were taught and you are you're you're going to live an unhappy life, an unfulfilled life, and you're not living in your God-given purpose because your God-given purpose is going to make you feel good. So you have to make your relationships, your spiritual walk, your um, career path, you have to live that from the inside out, not from the outside in. And as long as you're doing that, I think that you—and you, you and it's not easy— it's certainly not easy to do at all. Relationships, you might lose some friends. You might, you know, be feel really lonely sometimes. But if God is giving you that, that reasoning, that purpose, that feeling, who are you going to? Who who are you going to answer to? You're going to answer to that voice inside of you, or are you going to answer to those voices outside of you? Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think yeah. that's it. Yeah, and I I totally agree with her. Basically, just to really break it down, like I think everybody is looking outside for the answers mm-hmm. in relationships. You're looking at other people's relationships, comparing yeah. what they have versus what you have, and you know, even just see her and I, we used to crack jokes back when we first started, like, man, we gonna be like the new Will and Jada type, you know, energy in our life. And that and 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 saying that, we we weren't, you know, it's it's, it's we want the, the essence, the powerfulness of the essence of that. But then we we grow and we understand and mature. We start saying, no, we don't we don't want no Will and Jada. We we us. We Terry and Quran. This is us, how we do it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like we can't um look to anything outside of us to try to make what it worked for us. And I think us, even us in our community, um, we're struggling with our family dynamics and our relationships because again, like Terry stated, we're looking outside for all answers. We're looking, we're learning, we're learning from people that um, never really have really had good relationships in their lives any, at any point in time. So what do we expect? Right? So we, we, again, we got to get back to our source, back to our, our truths and and really start there. And I think instead of chasing an ideal, lock in on you and it'll find you. The relationship that you need that's supposed to be for you will appear naturally, instinctively. And I think both of us have naturally been those kind of people. Um, And that's why we found each other the way we found each other. And as we've grown, we've now started to learn Dang, now I understand why I'm the way I am and how and now it starts to all make sense. And I think what you just said is just the outside, looking outside. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and think it's, it's powerful. Imp- you guys allow each other to be yourself. That's the most important thing. Yeah. yeah. No one is stifling. Like That's I heard right. you say, he gives me, I, I can be me, freely be me, even if I'm the way I want to be loved. Yeah. Period. 
Yeah. It's reciprocity. I'm not going I'm I'm I am going to operate in our relationship exactly how I want you to operate with me. Now, does it work like that all the time? No, because she's still her and she's going to love me the way she wants to be loved and that's where you we, because after a while you become a mirror, mm-hmm. right? So like I get it when when there's, there's certain things going on, she gets some certain things going on, but again, I'm going to love her the way I want to be loved. Like I understand I need my space sometime. I need to be by myself. I love being by myself. That's why I ride bikes. What's your love language? My love language is probably physical touch, um, affirmation, and um, yeah, physical touch and affirmation for me. It, it, I, everything else, I don't need gifts. I don't need, um, what's the other ones? Acts of what's the other one? Quality time and acts of service. Uh, well, quality time, gifts. quality Anything. time is maybe fifty percent of my love language. Okay. I love, I do love spending time. I, I do need to get in there with you and and be in that moment with you for a minute. But yeah, the main two is probably physical touch and affirmations. What about you, too? I would say uh, time, time spent. Was that the one? Quality time, quality yeah. time, and affirmations as well. And also, I was going to say, you know, we're speaking a lot about. Um, our individualism and accepting each other as we are. But I think in that as well, when you when you get to a point where you where you have that base, you also operate in a space of this is my mate, and there are things I do sacrifice because because I love him. And I and even though I'm an individual and I got the things that I like and stuff that I you know sometimes I'll like okay let me do this because I know he likes this, and I think that's a part of relationshiping relationshiping I just yes. made that word up <laughs> <laughs> relationshiping yeah you you do do that a lot. It's like you make sacrifices. We make sacrifices for our kids. We don't want to do all that stuff all the time. I don't want to go to every game and every dance recital. I don't want to do all that, but we do because we love them and we want to pour into them. And I do the same for him and he does the same for I know he does a lot of stuff that he don't want to do. I know it, That's but so he does it because I, I want him to. That's so important <laughs> to say that, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That's, that's important. That's yes. how you build. Um, I, I did have another thought because, you know, we the longevity, right? Y'all both 17 and counting. Yeah. I think that's really beautiful. Um, but what are some red flags, if any? Like, what are some things where you just like, mm-mm, we got we to gotta come to the table and talk about that? Yeah. Because I do feel that sometimes when people are in relationships and again, they, they, they become hamsters and they on that wheel yeah. and, and, you know, they'll overlook some things and just be like, whatever at yep. a certain point. But what are some no no's for y'all that it's like, nah, we, we're not overlooking that. I know for me, I, I know we're in a, a trouble zone or a challenge zone when I feel myself shut down. Okay. Because sometimes I may not want the confrontation um, and I'm, I'm innately a people pleaser. Like okay. I want people to be happy around me. Um, so if I have something that I think is going to piss him off if, or because he's pissing me off and if I bring it up, it's going to piss him off. I, I would shut down and just not say it and hold it in. And then things are building up now, right? Because I'll keep holding stuff in. So that was my MO and things. So. I can catch myself now, like, nope, just say it and just deal with, you know, I'm making an assumption on what I think his reaction is going to be. Let me not do that. And mm-hmm. that assumption is based on something from the past, right? Yeah. Um, let me not do that. This is a new day, a new situation. Different. Let me we tell are. him that this made me mad we or whatever. Are. And I think, I think that's, yeah, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm agreeing with her. My red flag is the opposite of that. My red flag is that shut down. You shut down. I mean, you shutting down. I mean, the store is closed. We ain't. We ain't. Like for me, I need. Let's get it. Let's figure it. Let's work it. Let's figure the thing yeah. out. Like if I did something to piss you off, let's talk about it. Let's figure that out. I'm not. I'm never been a man who ran away from accountability. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I preach that. Like I. I try to try. I, I, I raise my sons, my daughter. I, I teach them. Like at the end of the day, man, you got to, you got to own your shit. You know, like, and I've been a, I, I, that's, that's kind of who I kind of stand on. Like, 
I'm going to own my mistakes because I'm going to own my wins too. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you straight up, yeah, I did that. And like, if I did, I did that too. Yep. Tricked that off. That was me. Um, and I and I guess for a red flag for me in the past, or just in our, my MO was if you shutting down on me, then all right, well, shit, I can shut down too and be what it is. You know, I don't, but I, again, like she said, we don't. How do you, how, do you, how did you overcome that though? Oh, I think Landmark. <laughs> <laughs> Landmark, we did a, we did a, um, we did a self, kind of a self-help seminar um, for couples and, you know, people, head of industries and things of that nature, where you go into this, 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 um, this workshop program and they basically teach you how to get out of your own way. Um, it teaches you to not create rackets of your, of your life, of people in your life, your mother, your father, your wife, your, your boss, your, your, your employees based on something Terry and I might be talking about on Sunday and it didn't go well, but on Monday, if we're about to have a whole new conversation, but now I've created a whole new story about what, how this conversation can go before we even get to it. That's called self, self, um, you know, based self sabotage. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to give the moment the moment. You can't live what mm -hmm. what what I did what I did yesterday. Let's see what the, this moment is, and that's where we gonna be at. And I think that is how we got to that place of understanding like we're going to be in the moment today like yeah i might have pissed you off on saturday but today is sunday and let's figure out if it's going to be the same or not and and if i talk about it honestly on saturday that it upset me and if you love me and i love her like she loves me and on sunday we talk about something else i'm gonna do the self-work for myself to not i hurt was just her gonna say that upset her based on what she told me before i don't know i'm fucking up until you tell me you know, in my mind, it was just, I'm doing it. This is what it is. I don't know. I think the self-work is has been the key for us. Um, and not thinking like, well, he needs to change. He needs to do that. It was like, let me go in on me. And doing that work, reading, like you said, um, we did a, a thing called Landmark, Um I just are studying spiritually where we are now. Like we're doing a lot of self-reflection, self-improvement, self-growing. Um, and we're we've always been very open to that. Like I couldn't be with somebody that was not about that. Um, because we are always changing, we're always growing from experiences, and we're supposed to, because there is never, we never get to the answer, whatever, this life answer of what our whole life and dream and purpose, why are we here? It is an ongoing journey, an ongoing research. And if you're not living your life every day on that journey of, of finding with that path, with that truth, what it is, I, I I cannot be with somebody that's not on that journey. And that doesn't mean we're on the at the same place at the same time. Sometimes you're up here, I'm back here, and then, whoa, I did a little bit more research now. It's ongoing. And that's what makes this life really fun, really exciting, really vulnerable. You know, a lot of crying, a lot of laughing, a lot of cocktails, a lot of, you know, all of it. Um, but all for the purpose of wanting to be our best selves for the world. Not for ourselves, but for the world. What am I giving to you guys right now being in this moment? That you're getting all of my studying and breakdowns and crying. And this is what you're getting yeah. right now. And I love being on this journey with him doing that. That makes it exciting for me. That makes me choose him every day. It makes me feel good. It makes That's me feel beautiful. safe. That's beautiful. I, uh, just taking a pause on that, but stepping into your craft, because I know you both, you know, creatives, and outside of this strike going on, is there anything that you're working on? Anything, yeah. any projects you want to let people know about, you know? Yeah. To kind of put that out, I think it's, you know, a good chance to go into that world a little bit, too. Oh, uh, man. I, yeah, like you said, we creators, man. I, and I like the, the new thing I've been on is just I'm a, I'm a co-creator with the universe and God, right? So, um, yeah, the strike is happening, but I still believe man can't dictate what I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. So, for me, I've just been creating. You know, I did another painting. Um, I created a new key pedaling jacket for my line. Um, 
uh, started doing skits. Okay. Uh, the Lion Side. You okay. Know, based on the, the the series she and I created years ago called The Lion's Crumbs. Okay. And um, just, just being creative, man. Like not letting the fear of the world penetrate the love of, of my creator and my creation inside of me and letting that stay thriving. That's mm-hmm. all, you know, and and just being ready. I I know everything in life comes to an end, like this strike will, and we'll go back to the hustle and bustle and be, she be on some continent directing or acting, I'll be on some continent directing, acting, do whatever it is we gonna be doing. Mm-hmm. And this moment in time will be, a, oh, it's over already? And that's just how I, you know, stand, mm-hmm. stand moving. Yeah, and I I feel like I feel like we're always right here at this moment for what? There is a reason. Like God does not make mistakes. So being in this atmosphere of the strike is for a reason. So it's my job to go inside. What what are you supposed to be learning, doing? So again, just continuing to create, to lean in and push myself further than what I had been. Cause uh, to be honest, I got comfortable. I was booked. I was booked through the end of the year um, on directing gigs. So I was like, easy breezy. This is what I do. Life is good. I love my house. I love my man. I love my kids. I love my career. Easy. I was too complacent. So there's things that I had said that I wanted to do that I put aside because I was busy working. Um, and what are now, some of those things, if you don't so mind? So now it's a one-woman show. Mm-hmm. I'm learning how to play the guitar. Um, I have my own uh, television series that I've been talking about for years. I'm putting a team together to shoot a sizzle for that. Like all these things that I wanted to do, I'm doing them now in this moment of the strike. Yeah, because life happens for you, not to you. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the energy that we keep in the house. It's like the worst thing that the world may look at it, it may happen to you. If you can keep your mindset on this happened for me versus happened to me, you you you'll find your way around a lot of challenges in life, and and you and you'll get the the lesson that was sent to you for a reason. And then we got to remember what we what, what our vision is and what we're asking for and what we're praying yeah. and doing every day because. You know, we'll pray for one thing and then one thing will happen and then we'll forget that we asked for this. But on the other, on, in order for you to get what you asked for, these things got to happen for this to happen. So yeah. you got to keep yourself in a bird's eye view of everything and understanding like, look, man, if you, 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 God knows what you're going for. And this strike, like she said, is happening for us. It's happening for me. Like, you know, I got, it's just, this is the time, you know, I, I take these times like, all right, this is the time for me to level up. So why everybody's. Yeah. Running around, oh, 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 no, no, it's time for me to get free and really go at, at what I want, you know? And that's that's where it's at. If, if you had, um, if you had a, a young man in front of you right now, what would be some words that you would, that you would give him? Trust your vision. Believe in yourself, first and foremost. Your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your brother, your pastor, nobody got to believe in you or will believe in until you do. And, um, and I'll say once you see the vision believe in it, find out what it takes to work to get that vision, right. and just keep pedaling until you hit your head on it. That's all I got. Right. What about you? Um, For a little girl, a little I'm young assuming. Lady, yeah, because yeah. we, we got to uplift, man. It's, you know, yeah, passing no. down this game is important. For sure. Um, I would definitely um, tell her to trust herself. I think, especially as women, we question ourselves all the time. We'll feel something like, I should do that or I should say this, but no, I shouldn't because da 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 Trust your instincts and go for it. And like he said, your vision, which you've been given, which's been dropped inside of you from God, mm-hmm. is yours. Your mom may not understand it. Your father may not understand it. Your brother... And they're giving you advice based on their own visions. Right. You have to trust yours and do the work to get it because it's possible. If you thought of it, you can do it. And yes, it may be hard work, but so what? So is making a diamond. Nothing comes without pressure and, and pressure, time, and dirt. That's the show. Terry J. Rock Bond, sorry. Karan Raleigh, Relationships Matter. See you next time. Relationships matter. I need you.